Today, I want to take just a moment to actually look at the purpose of St. Patrick's Day. Well, St. Patrick's Day is upon us again, and this is one of the holidays that I feel that we don't really fully grasp uh, what it's all about. And the whole world doesn't grasp this. As a matter of fact, from since I was a very young child, there were certain aspects of it that really have nothing to do with it uh, that I've seen that people have celebrated. For instance, uh, leprechauns. We think of leprechauns, right? We think of rainbows, don't we? We think of wearing green. And that's a big deal, right? You got to wear green on St. Patrick's Day or you will get pinched. And sadly enough, today uh, people get drunk on green beer. Now, actually, those things have nothing at all to do with St. Patrick's Day. Don't you find it strange that the word saint is part of the name of this holiday? Uh, that word gives us our first clue, I think, to what St. Patrick's Day is really all about. You see, saint simply means to be set apart. Uh, it means to be holy. So we're talking about Holy Patrick. We're talking about Patrick who is set apart. And uh, that's not making him any different than others in the sense of that he was just a normal Christian. Because in the Bible, all Christians are called saints. And uh, But Patrick didn't start out as a saint, though. See, Patrick wasn't even Irish. He was a Roman Brit who spoke Latin and a bit of Welsh. Uh, Patrick was born around 390 AD, and when he was roughly 16 years of age, he was captured by pirates and taken to Ireland on a ship where he was sold into slavery. He spent the next six years alone in the wilderness as a shepherd for his master's cattle and sheep. Now, now Patrick was a rebellious teenager who had come from a Christian family, but had rejected his family's faith. His grandfather was a pastor, his father was a deacon, and during his isolation here as a kidnapped slave, Patrick began praying. And eventually he received Jesus Christ as his Savior and Lord. It's said that Patrick endured the years of slavery and isolation by praying up to 100 prayers each day and another 100 each night. In his early 20s, God spoke to Patrick in a dream, telling him to flee from his masters there for a ship that was waiting for him. Patrick made a 200-mile journey on foot without being caught or harmed to find a ship setting sail for his home, just as God had promised. Once home, Patrick entered the ministry and became a pastor. And it would seem that all had turned out well for Patrick, right? But God wouldn't let him forget about those slave masters that he had left behind. Patrick learned about Jesus, and he learned that Jesus loves his enemies. And Patrick knew that those enemies that he had who had kidnapped him and held him in slavery were people for whom Jesus had died as well. He like Jesus, chose to forgive his enemies. And under great conviction, he began a missionary campaign to return to Ireland and lead these people to Jesus. Now, the church had given up on these Irish pagans. They considered them to be beyond all hope. Uh, they were wicked and debased and involved in unimaginable sin and bloodlust, unlike the, even the things that we see today in our current society. Pastor Mark Driscoll, during his study of Patrick's story, stated that the Celtic peoples, of which the Irish were part, were an illiterate bunch of drunken, fighting, perverted pagans who basically had sex with anyone and worshipped anything. They were such a violent and lawless people, numbering anywhere from 200,000 to 500,000, that they had no city centers or national government and were spread out among some 150 warring clans. Their enemies were terrified of them because they were known to show up for battles and partake in wild orgies before running into battle naked and drunk while screaming as if they were demon-possessed. One clan was so debased that it was customary for each of their new kings to copulate with a white mare as part of his inauguration. Now, that is a side of wickedness that we haven't seen before, right? A level of debauchery that goes beyond anything we can imagine today. Now, things may be heading that way, but they're not there yet. But Patrick had a love for these people. He knew that no matter how debased, no matter how degenerate, no matter how wicked... God still loved them, and he wanted to see them saved. And he had sent Patrick uh, to show them the truth, to show them the way to the Savior, Jesus Christ, who would change their lives and lead them out of this wickedness. 
Patrick began his missionary effort in his 40s and planted churches all across the land until his death at 77. He often used a shamrock to explain the Trinity to them, showing the three different petals as how uh, the Trinity worked, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. He baptized the leaders of these clans and planted hundreds of churches. Now, this is a man who literally gave his life to see his enemies saved. He is one of the greatest missionaries who ever lived. For those who follow liturgical calendars, his feast day falls around this time. Now, as a Baptist, I don't follow a liturgical calendar, uh, but I can greatly admire the celebration of a great missionary. One thing Baptists are about is about uh, sending people out into the world. Uh, Missionary efforts are very important to us. I can also see the irony of the present state of the situation when it comes to St. Patrick's Day today. You see, a man who turned so many away from worldliness is now remembered in a holiday where so many are getting drunk and are fascinated with pagan ideas, all of these being the same things that Patrick led the Irish people away from so long ago. So that's the story of St. Patrick. Perhaps we can take a lesson uh, from Patrick. When we see our neighbors sipping their green beer and acting like pagans, let's not act like we don't know them. Let's not act like that's fine and okay. Maybe we can be like Patrick. Go over and introduce them to Jesus Christ, who will point them to real salvation and real life uh, beyond the debauchery, the wickedness, the drunkenness, and uh, all of those things beyond to real life. Uh, It can only be found in the Savior. See, it isn't just about getting them saved. It's about discipling them and leading them through the kingdom. We are saved by grace through faith. And that not of ourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works that God hath before, before ordained that we should walk in them. Be the missionary that Christ has called us all as Christians to be. I want to leave you with this quote from St. Patrick. I think we can apply that all to ourselves as we remember him today. I am a servant of Christ to a foreign nation for the unspeakable glory of life everlasting, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. I hope you're enjoying the sermons here and have subscribed to my channel on YouTube, but I would love even more to meet with you in person at the church where I'm blessed to pastor at in White Pine, Tennessee, Omega Baptist Church. 